Hello and welcome to my review of the Toby Eye Tracker 5.0 and this is a kind of mixed review as I'm going to show you my preferred settings in the game itself as well. So stay tuned for that and thank you for watching. Well, what should I say? I really went into this open-minded and uh, I tried to like the device and my first impressions of the device were quite okay, but also I was a little bit skeptical about what you can use this for and about whether I really can recommend it because uh, <laughs> I feared that you have to do many workarounds and do many things in the settings menus to get this really to a kind of a good position to start with. And in the end, <laughs> it was just like this. So let me tell you about uh, the process I had with uh, this device a little bit. Is it plug and play? For sure. Yes, uh, kind of. It is plug. Yes, you stick the USB part in and it kind of works. The software is really great. Uh, the calibration is easy, as you saw in my last video. And I can say honestly that for a new device of uh, this kind, it was a really easy and great experience to get started with this this fast. I In my past, I have really tested many, many devices. I uh, have a bunch of VR headsets here and um, some uh, early stage VR prototype gloves and something like that. And every time I use them, the installation process alone took me days. Yeah. So I'm someone who likes to experiment with things. And in this case, I didn't have to. Yeah. Until I got into the game itself. <laughs> and there the fun started. Um, as you have seen my last video, I'm going to link this video somewhere here. When I changed my head position to the left or to the right, and I looked there and there, the device was responsive, yes, but it was kind of too responsive for me, for my taste. If I just looked a little bit to the left or to the right, the head would swing in this direction, and that direction, and in FPS mode it wasn't even kind of usable for me with the standard settings that are delivered with Star Citizen. And I went on to test this device. I went on and on and on and put hours in it. And with the time I... Well, I thought, wow, I cannot recommend this at all because I wasn't able, um, by all means, uh, I uh, shared opinions with other YouTubers and Twitchers and streamers and friends who got this device. And for me, I did not find settings that were good enough to have a really fluish, great game experience. And I will show you why later in this video. But and here's the thing, I was going to shoot the review in this morning and while I shot the review where I was kind of, yeah, I can recommend this to some of you, um, kind of, a little bit, I just found my settings and now it works like a charm. I'm really surprised by this and so I think if you tend to be someone who likes to buy things that you just plug in and you think they should work immediately and you have to do no settings at all to get the, uh, a good experience, no, this device is not for you. But the same thing could be said about dual joystick setups, about HOTAS, uh, etc. if you try to implement them in Star Citizen especially. And so with the new settings that I will show you immediately in the game, let me start this up first. I'm really happy now. Good. Let me start the game and I'll show you why. So here we are back into the game and first of all we are in the FPS mode. And I'd like to show you the first settings you really have to do if you're interested in this device or if you ordered it and got it. Uh, you go into the options menu, hitting escape, options, and you go into the key binding settings. And in the key binding settings, um, you go into the advanced control customization. Um, here, as you can see, I have activated the little icon here that you can see where I look. 
You can also deactivate this really easily by closing a special little software you get with a device. And so here we are. And I go to the setting, where is it? Voice over IP, facial over IP and head tracking. And opening this, you should really set something to be able to enable the head tracking and disable it. And also you should have a button set to, where is it? To recenter, here it is, uh, to recenter the head tracking device, yes. These are the buttons you really should use and you will use them quite often, I think. Personally, I have also set my joystick to use these buttons in my two joystick setup. Here are the buttons I use. Okay, so then in the options menu, you go to the comms, FOIP and head tracking settings. And here now you can see that you are able to set some toggles on or off some automatic toggles. So, so for example, I have set the Mobi glass window to toggle the head tracking off. So while my head tracking is enabled here, if I press F1 to go into the Mobi glass, this is off and I have an easy time to go through the menus without these moving while my head or my eyes are moving back into the settings menu. I will disable this for now with a simple joystick button click. Here we have some sliders we should really talk about because these sliders are most important to give you a good experience with this device. Here you are able to disable the head tracking if the input is missing. I have set this to two seconds. This can be helpful if you drink something and you drink for a little bit longer. Uh, your head is going to not get tracked while you have something in front of your face. At some point it might be a good idea to stop the head tracking so that nothing spins around within the game. Okay. Here you have the sensitivity pitches for pitch, your um, and roll, sensitivity settings, sorry. Here you have the dead zones. Okay, I have set the dead zones to maximum so that if I have little movement from my face, you can see this here, I activate it now, it isn't going to move with me. And I wish that these settings would be even would have an even greater impact so that um, something like this or this could also be set to not have an impact on your game's view. Uh, these are movements you sometimes do not really thinking about them if you're in a conversation with a friend in a Discord or Teamspeak or something like that. So, but you have this little button to enable this and disable this. Okay, next. Options menu. Scrolling down, 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 down. Okay, the dead zone for roll I haven't touched. And here is the smoothing speed. I noticed that if I don't set this to the maximum, the uh, experience might be some mm, a little bit, little bit jittery from time to time. So. It will move very fast for, from left to right. And as I'm recording often, and I'm recording while using this headset, it gives the viewer a much nicer experience if the camera is smoothed out and not going directly where the tracking itself wants you in every millisecond. Okay, set the smoothing threshold to the max two. Here we have the input scale. And the input scale normally is set to 11 and I can show you what this does. If I move my head just a little bit to the right, it will go there, and a little bit to the left, it will go there. And this is much too far away. Even for me, using a 32 to nine scale monitor, the, the impact of the movement is much too great. Can I say that in this way? Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, options menu. If I set this even higher, like to the maximum, this will move even further. 
If you have a little screen, this might be okay for you as you want your head to move around very fast and very, very wide with only little movement. But for me, this is, uh, isn't a great idea. I want it to be more precise with, uh, with, uh, with my movements. Oh, wrong menu. Yeah, there. So I set this to zero. I also use uh, these dead zones for left, right, up and down, forward, back to the maximum. The next setting I will explain later. Okay. And as you can see, with these settings, I can do little movement and for me, it really feels like where I want to look, the head moves. This feels precise. Yeah. And I hadn't tried this set, uh, to set this setting to zero at all uh, until today. So I was really missing the point here. Now it feels really okay and it doesn't overshoot always. That's the word I searched for earlier. Okay. Back into the settings menu. We'll get to the point now. Mm. We have a wonderful setting if I use the right menu, <laughs> sorry. And um, this is the um, Head Tracking Toby Input Mix. This is a wonderful one. This really uh, makes this shine and I will show you why in the cockpit later again. But this is a setting where you can move it to the right uh, and enable it only to your head is tracked and you can do with your eyes what you want but it doesn't move at all. Or and the head tracking is a little bit, just a little bit slower than the eye tracking. I have to admit that. If I move this to the other side, I can move my head around, but as long as I look at the same point, nothing happens at all. But if I just look in another way with my eyes, Wow, this really is fast and responsive. So in some situations, it might be wonderful to just uh, be able to use the eyes to look somewhere and um, look somewhere fast and get back to the point you wouldn't look to. Okay. For me, I have found out that setting this to... Uh, Again, the wrong menu. Here we are. To 85% so that the um, head tracking is the main source of the movement and the eye tracking has a little bit of impact. Um, seems to be a wonderful idea. Okay, as you can see, the uh, other dead zones I have set to maximum as well. Oh, this was the wrong one. <laughs> Input scale zero, and here we are, 0 0.85. Okay, the gaze responsiveness is set to 0 0.852, and the yours I haven't touched at all. And here you can see uh, the center stabilization. The center stabilization is also something to set to your liking. If you set this to the maximum, your head is a little bit longer centered, and if you look to the right, it will kind of move later. If you set it to zero, it will move immediately, but all uh, kind of movement has an instant impact. And uh, I swear to you, you don't want to do, have this as uh, your camera gets really shaky with this. So the middle point uh, was where I uh, thought I could go with and be lucky. Okay. And I have enabled, this is standard to the auto centering um, of the headset so that if you have made a little movement, it kind of accepts that your head has a new standard position. This can happen while leaning back a little bit more in your chair or something like that. Okay, I think I haven't touched the other input scales and that zones here. In this way, if I enable this, I can look to the left and right and be very precise with the movement 
and get to the center quite easily again. And if I just use my eyes to the left and to the right and to the down and up, it would have a little bit of impact, but not make my screen shaky while I move. Okay, nonetheless, in first person, or let me show this in third person, sometimes this can give you a good view and experience, but sometimes you don't want it. And so it's good to be able to just get away with this and being able to disable it. I will show you why in the cockpit. Okay, let's jump right into the cockpit and see you there again. So here we are back in front of our ship and this is really where this begins to shine. Um, I go outside, enable the view and as you can see, moving my eyes just a little bit, I am able to look left and right and moving my head I'm able to take in much more of the scenery as I would be able to just using the normal devices here. Can I have a look at the bottom? Fill my feet. Yeah, great thing. <laughs> so here we are in the Pisces. And by the way, if you never heard the song, you really should uh, give it a try. There's this Ukrainian metal band um, called, oh, what was the name, damn it. Uh, Search for Pisces uh, and metal. And uh, I think you will love what you get to hear. Yeah. <laughs> that is a surprising one if you don't know it already. So let's start the ship. I will disable this for now and as you can see, Nothing happens, especially if the tracking is disabled. And I will just fly around the station here and show you the capabilities of this device. So, here we are. And now I'm going to enable this through cl clicking and this is just wonderful. You can see that if I move just my eyes with the settings I choose, I am able to look around a little bit and the thing I choose to focus on in the cockpit is the thing my head gets kind of centered, but not enough to discard the view itself. If I had set this settings um, more responsive, and that was what um, gave me a really bad experience before. If I had set the dead zones um, lesser or um, the sliders of the movement just a little bit higher. If I looked to the bottom, the head would follow just in a way that the um, head would look way more down and so in a fight, looking at your screen below to check your own shields would result in you not seeing what is happening. And with these settings I chose, I'm able to look down with my eyes alone, have a little look that is really responsive on the menus. And I can in a very fast way that wouldn't be possible otherwise um, using a joystick setup or a hotel setup have a good view over all my instruments um, and this even counts more in ships where the instruments are uh, arranged up and down and wherever you want in your cockpit and using my head I can do the bigger movements yes and six stuff is enabled here too so if I want to have a closer look, I can do this too. Okay. So with this, let's just do some flying here. I can really look to the right and only use my eyes to look back onto my instruments. 
I can look to the left very far and using my eye, I can have a look on the other instruments in the other direction. And this is something that only this device has, uh, can offer you at the moment. Yeah, this is, is a wonderful thing. And while I'm still going to um, present you Star Citizen in VR in the future, and if you want to see this and how it's done, just leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I think that this is something really special. So I can have a look here. And I really get, get a much nicer feeling of how big this all is. No, this is not VR. VR in this uh, scenario uh, has an even greater impact on you be feeling that you are piloting a big ship. But I think it's really worth it. For me it is. Have a look on the outside. My conclusion, as long as you are willing to put some time in and um, get your own settings right that you prefer, and um, as long as you are willing to sometimes push an extra button to enable and disable your experience with this, I can really recommend this. Yeah, It has a great impact on your views. I don't think that you will um, get better or something like this in FPS or in PvP situations it can be distracting sometimes. But if you're the explorer type of a player and you want to just have a better immersion, I think this device can really be a great choice. So. That's it from me. If you have any questions or if I should explain something um, more about this device, you can contact me. Just leave a comment below. I will get back to you. And um, so this is, was way longer than I expected this to be. Uh, the original review I planned was way shorter, but I thought in this case, it might make sense to give you an overview over my experience with this so far. Uh, so that this is, isn't a review just telling you, wow, uh, this has happened now and uh, now uh, uh, buy this thing. Um, it was important for me to tell you about the experience I made, about the way it took me to get to a good experience with this. And lastly, it was all about finding out the right settings for me and also thinking about why I want to use this and in what scenarios I want to use this. And as I am one of those who plays for the immersion more, way more than for the effectiveness, I think I'm lucky with this device and I keep it at least as long as VR isn't implemented in the game itself, which I really wish for. This being said, I have to say that there are wishes I have. These would make the device even more better. The one thing that would be my biggest wish here would be that you don't get only sliders uh, that enable you to um, do some settings like way, um, how responsive your head is from left to right, but it would be awesome to get curves so that you could use the device and tell them if I get to a certain mark, the head movement should be should have way more impact or way less impact. This would really make the device totally awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thank you for watching this far. If you like, comment, leave a like, subscribe, and even if you have some critics, just write them down. I'm eager to learn all of the time and just try to be a little nice and constructive with me and my heart. <laughs> and I hope to see you in the world soon. Bye.